Hi, my name is uh, Jeff Brown, Professor Brown. I'm an uh, English professor here. I've been working at Moore Park for 10 years. And I have a presentation, uh, the title of which is How to Achieve in School and Life. And what I'm trying to present to the student is a better, more thorough understanding of the limitations uh, of, the co of a college degree, an undergraduate degree. Uh, I use a lot of material coming from Academically Adrift, which is uh, research put together by a couple of sociologists uh, who are really aware of, of the shortcomings of, uh, of an undergraduate degree. Uh, there are many employers aware of this, uh, that uh, college students are lacking in some basic skills, uh, the holy trinity, I guess you could call it, uh, critical thinking, complex re reasoning, and writing communication skills. And um, because of this, many employers are now going to graduate students or foreign sources uh, for potential employees. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Welcome today to uh, today's workshop. Uh, the presentation is on how to achieve in life and school. Okay, so, some important issues here. Um, education, we, we've talked about this before, but education is, is something that we really have to first and foremost qualify, define, quantify what does it really mean in order to get the greatest benefit out of it. We really have to work towards a particular, specific, individual definition for ourselves. What does education really mean, okay? There's a lot of problems going on now, K through college, okay? One third, one third of high school students dropping out. Why? Several reasons. Uh, related to, of course, the economy. Education is critical, but when the money is not coming in or the economy is suffering, moms and dads aren't able to pay the bills. And sometimes moms and or dads are not able to pay the bills because of the fact that there is a divorce. A divorce has occurred, and that frequently means that there's oftentimes two households that an individual, a mom or a dad, has to pay for. So divorce, along with the fact that the economy has really tanked in recent years, often sends uh, students high school students, off to the reality that more money is needed to survive. So a lot of kids are dropping out to go to work. And what they would like to do is find part-time jobs, but because of uh, minimum wage issues, which is now like $8.50 an hour, uh, small companies, which are the majority of companies in the United States, uh, can't afford uh, to pay $8.50 an hour. Uh, say a particular company wants five part-time employees at $8.50 an hour, they can't afford that. So they just create one full-time job. So that's another reason why kids in high school are dropping out. There aren't the part-time jobs there. And of course, there's a real problem with jobs now. I think the last report I read is that in uh, June, or I think it was maybe in May, uh, like 18,000 jobs were created when there, you know, there were, their goal was to shoot for 90,000. And ideally, in order to get us back up to where we used to be, it should be 300,000 a month. So jobs are a real issue. You know, we have to talk about the realities in regards to education, not just some fanciful notion of theory of education. So the first one is a basic myth. You know, a bachelor's degree is the best, and some will say the only path to high achievement, career satisfaction, you know, the ideal American dream, and satisfying the American dream. Uh, but the, the reality is that we'll talk to uh, more issues in regards to this, this uh, um, bachelor's degree of failing many uh, who are graduating with bachelor's degrees. There are many uh, factors involved. But let's, let's just look at the fact that uh, the, the basic myth is, you know, I get a college degree and I can get a job and a career and a great life. Um, if we look at the Forbes 400 list, and not saying that, you know, the high achievers are an indicator of uh, where we need to be with our college degree, but it's, it is a good indicator. We're just going to use that for now. Just to kind of get a general feel for this uh, the problems with the college degrees and what we're getting and not getting with the college degree. Um, Forbes 400, uh, the majority of those on the Forbes 400 list uh, either don't have a college degree 
or if they do have a college degree, it's a run-of-the-mill college, I guess you could say. It's not a Stanford or Harvard uh, or Princeton. And those who don't go to uh, prestigious uh, universities are not the ones on the 400 list who are, who are at the highest uh, positions on, the list, on that list. Uh, many two-year degrees, STEM degrees, and you'll, you've probably heard that referred to uh, by uh, um, President Obama, uh, science, technology, engineering, and medicine. Uh, we, you know, because e economically that's where the money is, uh, that's where this country uh, you know, can make the best money, uh, improve our economy, uh, and that's where many students are also interested in because those are high paying, but they're highly demanding field of, fields as well, that's why they pay the highest. They're hard jobs, they're demanding jobs, so they're going to pay more. But there are many uh, two-year degrees, college degrees, technical degrees, even one-year degrees, technical degrees, that you can get now that outpay uh, many four-year degrees. Okay, so something to keep in mind. Uh, college ensures job security. Actually, capitalism's creative uh, destruction ensures job insecurity. Capitalism, the basic nature of capitalism, is founded in the fact that it's all about coming up with the latest, greatest product or service, okay? So that means that there's going to be a lot of turnover. Uh, in the United States, there's actually more job destruction in the United States than in any other country. But the bottom line is that because of the fact that capitalism works well when it's allowed to operate as freely as possible, and that's why this country is one of the freest, the freer the country is, the freer the individual is to make free choices and trade freely, the stronger the economy is going to be, okay? So this economy, actually people worry about uh, Japan and China, but actually this, out, this, this economy, the, the economy in this country, outstrips uh, uh, China three to one, even though there's uh, three or four times as many people. Um, so this is a very strong uh, country, that's a very strong uh, economic system. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind. The basic nature of you know job security is kind of a myth, because the basic nature of capitalism is the very fact that there are a lot of jobs, uh, you know, coming and going all the time. I mean, if you look at Blockbuster, there's not as many Blockbusters around anymore. Why? Because a better idea has come up. What is that? Netflix, right? Uh, borders no longer around. Why? Uh, because a better idea has come along. Um, Amazon, right? So things come and go. Uh, college. College education, we can uh, think about college education uh, in regards to K through, uh, K through college, 16 years. College is my education, learning for life. But that's not true. Many factors, why? More capitalism, meaning that there's more countries out there who have come online. Uh, if you look at East Germany, Russia, even China, which is still communist, uh, but they're using capitalism. So eventually they're going to have to have a democratic uh, uh, political system. Uh, there's greater job complexity out there, being that jobs now, uh, as, as time has gone on, uh, there's, there's more knowledge that has been put forth, so there's more that you have to know, there's more complexity, there's more uh, job specialization, right? I used to work in the computer field, and you really get, you, you know, as time goes on, you get into a smaller and smaller and smaller niche, or a little segment of that entire um, job sector, you know, the computer job sector. Um, job, uh, economic turbulence, uh, Alan Greenspan, who was the head of the Federal Reserve under five administrations, uh, talks about uh, in his book, Age of Turbulence, uh, all these issues, you know, the complexity, and more and more countries coming online to capitalism. There's more and more uh, economic turbulence. There's more job turbulence as we get move more into a uh, job, a worldwide job market, okay, something that College ensures a job, a good wage, money for life, including retirement. Many people now are retiring only on $25,000. The majority of people, uh, somewhere 80 to 90%, <coughs> rely on family, friends, and the government to get by. My father, uh, Ivy League educated, Brown University, went to a prestigious graduate school, had a job as a um, mechanical engineer at Pratt Whitney his entire life. He is now telling me, I hope uh, that I don't outlive my benefits, okay? So uh, job security is a myth. We talked about that. Capitalism, especially now, is there's more capitalism. There's more uh, economic turbulence and turnover, okay? Something to think about. 
Uh, after graduating, I now have an education. Uh, and research shows that most students study for grades. They're studying to the grade, something that is extrinsic or outside of the individual. It's not, they're not internally or, or internally motivated. Uh, so uh, shortcuts occur because of that. And I'll get more into detail on that as we go. <coughs> Uh, so most, most are now choosing, most students are now choosing majors like they choose uh, the flavor of ice cream at the mall. You know, spend about as much time or investment. Uh, so, and, and most, once again, most, most majors, and we'll get more into this uh, extrinsic and intrinsic, if you're intrinsically motivated, if it's something you really want to do, you're working to your uh, natural core talents, abilities, gifts, and desires, that's the stuff that's really going to propel you forth to greater success and achievement in career and life. But <clears throat> unfortunately, the majority of students, according to Academically Adrift, uh, choose a major for extrinsic, external reasons, for job prospects, social or political trends, or maybe because parents or peers or friends are going into a particular major or suggesting or advising a particular major. Uh, also, many choose uh, a major based on a particular college's menu. You know, what are the courses being offered? They don't go off that menu or think creatively based on intrinsic, what they really want to do, okay? <coughs> uh, students stay in prolonged states of directionless shift. And I see this. The average student is going to change his or her major three times. And some of that changing is acceptable and okay. But too many are changing too much because they don't know this stuff. This is critical. And knowing this stuff is going to cut back on wasted time, wasted money, wasted... Uh, uh, in investment in, in, in education that doesn't pay off, you know. 70% uh, of students graduating uh, within five to ten years no longer working in uh, a field related to their major. So there's a lot of waste going on. We really have to pinpoint this down, hone it down to who we are specifically, match it to a specific education training, match it to a specific career. So there's more indecision than motivated reflection. There's more confusion than the pursuit of clear goals. There's more ambivalence than determination, according to uh, psychologist William Dane. <clears throat> and because of this lack of intrinsic understanding, thus motivation, students take the easiest path with least effort, obtaining the weakest results. 